welcome back to another episode of Cooking in the Raw. I'm your host, Marcello B. Kidd, where I bring you live cooking. And today's show, I'm going to do something a little different with a twist here. I mean, how many meat eaters are out there? Raise your hand. I see you. I see you over there. Well, we're going to do something with chicken today. You know, a dish I like to do on occasions. You know, kind of fancy, kind of not. You know, cross between a sausage and what's called a French called a galantine. You know, and I'm going to be working with chicken and I'm going to deep on the chicken. So let's stop talking and let's get it started. All right, so what I have here, everything set up here, you know, so I can go through, have a place for my bones. I have here quarter legs, which includes the thigh, the thigh and the leg. I have my bowl here for I'm going to mix up the ingredients, you know, as flavor and spice them. Here's my chopping board. I'm not going to use a blender. I'm going very, very old school here in which I do it all with a knife and no food processor. So wish me luck. All right, so chicken's thawed, you know, thawed, a little cool, you know, try to bring up the room temperature. You know, I start this, got my scrap ball, you know, cut off some of the fat here. Now what I'm going to do with a lot of the fat, you know, rendered the fat for grease in addition to the bones I'm going to use to make a chicken stock. Nothing goes to waste. I have a saying that goes something like this, you know, waste nothing, use everything. You know, that's my motto. So let's get this, let's loosen up the skin and get the skin off. We've got two pieces of meat here to be fine, which is going to have the better skin for my dish. Stick your thumb, up, thumb or finger up underneath and just slightly loosen the skin. As you can see here, you know, skin is just coming off naturally. You want to force it because we want to rip the skin. A sharp knife is important here. You can see how sharp this knife is. Watch this. Nice little slit down in the flesh here. You know, so a sharp knife is important for this process to get the skin off and also to get the bones or the meat off of the bones. So I don't want to rip, again, I don't want to rip the skin because that's the most important part of the dish. Well, it's a good thing that I have two, <laughs> just in case, all right? So you see how it just comes off, all right? And we want it to keep its shape, all right? Nice and easy, nice and easy. Not too intense. Very easy. You know? So you just follow the natural lines of the meat. Now, here's the part here. Well, how are you going to get it off the bone shell? Well, here's what I like to do here with the bone down near the drumstick. I go right to the, close to the knuckle joint. This is where I'm going to make an incision through the tendons, through the skin. So when I get here, I can now just pull this completely off off of the ball okay so I'm still cutting this through cutting it through okay all right beautiful beautiful now when you're working with chicken or any raw meat make sure that's all you're working with in that section okay all right looks good all right so far so good looking nice get all the seam you off and here we go. All right, pull, pull, pull. Voila, there you go. Nice piece of skin, but it's not done yet. Okay, as you can see here, here's where the drumstick is right here. And then here's the part of the thigh and a part of the leg right here. All right, so that's part of the skin we're gonna use here. So I'm gonna just set this right over here for now. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and take the other skin off right away, so we'll come back to that. We'll take the other skin off right away. Let's see what we got here. All right, looking pretty good. Again, slide that finger underneath the skin and get it pre-loosened, you know, so you can find the natural areas where it's going to just easily come apart. All right. Take that off. Dan, don't forget to have a sharp knife. Take your time. I mean, when cooking, I like to say to people, have fun. Never be in a hurry, you know, just enjoy yourself. Make sure you take the time. For me, it's meditative. You know, just be in the kitchen and putting together a dish. I thoroughly enjoy it. All right, so there we go there. So you got a little rip in the skin there, but that's okay. We have two pieces. <laughs> but no, that's all right, you know. As long as we don't have any huge rips in the skin, that's why you have to be very careful with the knife. So don't any huge rips in the skin for when we get to the part when we have to stuff. Okay, that's the most important piece. Now let's make an incision. Now you can make the incision 
in the lower part of the leg first or second is entirely up to you. Sometimes I do it first, sometimes I do it second. Okay, honestly, sometimes I forget. That's why I get done second. <laughs> so, but cooking doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be fun. All right? Go ahead, continue cutting that off, you know? And we're getting close to the fun part. Can we do it? Can we rip off a whole piece? Now, sometimes I wear gloves and we're doing different things, but today I'm just working with the chicken. So it's okay. And there we go. Okay, there's another piece. All right, we're gonna clean this off when we get to that point. I probably won't use both pieces, but there's a start. You can see the little hole in this one here versus the first one, all right? Little holes right there. Hello, hello, hello. But the main part of the skin right here is what we're gonna be using. So the holes are okay. That becomes a part of the wrap when we make that decision to wrap the meat. All right, now, for the fun part, Let's get it off of the bone. So to get off the bone, you know, you have to work with the joints, okay? So we have the thigh here, and we have the leg here, and then there's a joint right here that's connecting like the knee bone. The knee bone's connected to the leg bone, leg bone. You know the song, all right? Sing along with me. So now, let's go ahead and start to just follow the natural part of the bone. See, there's a joint here that's connecting to the hip, right here. That's what I want to take off. This is part of the hip, okay, the pelvis. There's the bone right there, joint. All right, once you get that cracked, now all you're doing is simply just following the flesh. Crack it through, cut through the tendon, okay, and cut through the flesh. Get it off, 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 off. So far so good, looking good, looking good. Now again, all of this, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna mix this meat up. There we go, off of the hip, boom. That goes inside the pot. Now we're left with the thigh bone and the leg bone. So let's go through. Now watch how easy this is gonna be. All right, make an incision right next to the bone. Let's hold it up here so you can see it. Right next to the bone, boom, done. Cut all of the pieces around the bone, around the joint, Okay, now we're gonna to try to debone this hole. Again, as I said, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna mess this up anyway, but I want you to see the whole process. You see how it just simply comes off the bone, scraping off of the bone, okay? Nice and easy. I mean, that's if you wanted to use the whole piece for something, all right? Again, there's our joint there, okay? Now, we can do one or two things. We can go ahead and crack this off, separate it, so then we just have to bone the thigh and bone the leg, or we can just try to go around the entire piece, okay? Now, in this case, I'm gonna separate the two, correct? Okay, I'm gonna separate the two because I want to, oh, look at here. Look what happened. It just came right out. Nice. Nice and not nice, because that means now I'm going to have a lot of extra work to do when I have to go through to debone or to take out the little small tendons from the leg. But let's see how this is all going to work out. So we might as well cut this open, almost like butterflying it. This is the leg, okay? We still got the little joint here. We want to get the meat off, cut that off. So we trim this around like so, nice and easy. You know, turn the skin out, nice and easy. You see how easy that's coming apart? Nice and easy. All right, and you get to a point that you don't want the gristle, okay? And all the little pin bones, there's a pin bone. You know that long bone that runs down the leg when you eat a drumstick? That's that bone right here. So I'm gonna see if I can save some time for myself and cut that out, and that's just to go through and take off the rest of the tendons. Boom, done. So what you just saw me do here, there you go. And whatever meat that's left, this is all gonna go for the stop. So here we go again. Here's the leg part right here. We're gonna fold that over, and here's the thigh part. Completely boned. All right, we're gonna save this meat. We're gonna set that on this tape, this cutting board here. So that we can use it. Now I'm gonna take off all of these tendons, because you don't want that, you know, in your meat. So take off the tendons. Very simple process here. 
If you can get a good grip, grab the tendon and just scrape. There you go. Done. Set that off to the side. And you only want to find those mainly in the tender on the breast and definitely inside of the leg. You know, there's a lot of tendons inside of the leg, just like yourself. And some you just may have to cut off. All right, let's scrape this off, okay? Because we don't want any of this in our galantine or our force meat. All right, scrape, scrape, scrape. Get all of the flesh out. Okay, beautiful, that piece. Let's get this piece. All right. Get all, so this is all on the leg, not the thigh. This is all on the leg. Okay, and voila, that's another piece. Keep that. Well, toss it off to the side. Take off some of the fat. Okay, make sure there's no hard pieces inside of the thigh, which is not. Let's take this tendon off. Okay. Sometimes you have to just cut them out. This is good. Right here, let's scrape these off. And sometimes it's hard to hold, so if you've got a little nail, just pinch it down on there and hold it. There's that one. And a couple more. There's that one. And this is where, again, as I said, this is where cooking needs to be fun. You need to really enjoy what you're doing for this part, because this takes a lot of time. Only, but only working with the leg. Pinch down. And I just want a clean piece of meat here when I get begin to form it into my sausage. So you saw me do this when I just took out both bones all at once. Okay? So that looks pretty good. Voila. Now let's trim off some of this fat, like so. Let's put it so you can see it. Let's trim off some of the fat. Notice I'm not cutting the meat away, I'm just cutting off the fat. Okay? And uh, that's that. Alright, that's one piece. Let's move this over. So that's one piece that we're going to use. Let's take that little piece too. Now move this over to the corner and let's begin to work with our next piece. Alright, that goes inside. Let's find our joint here, which there it is, off the hip. Now let's take this off the hip. You know, when you're scraping, you're scraping close to the bone. That's your guideline, scraping close to the bone and moving the clay. And there we go, that's inside. This time, we'll see if I can cut through you know, I'll show you a different way. Cut through it. Okay. So what you most of see there's a joint there, and we're gonna cut through. Okay. So now we have our separate leg and a separate thigh. So you can see it happening a couple of different ways. Same process here in boning the thigh around the joints, getting all the flesh off. Okay, voila, I don't want this tendon there, or the gristle, if you want to call it that. Scrape this down all the way around. Okay, see where we're at here. Beautiful. Now cut around. Gristle. Boom, inside. There are no hard pieces. Trim off some of the fat right there. Some of this fat over here. Voila. Anything else that you find less appetizing. You definitely want to have any gristle or hard points or any pieces of bone. All right, that's another thigh, like so. Now let's do the leg, the other leg. I did just pretty much just did a butterfly right down the center of the leg, all right, to open it up, all right, so I can have all the tendons and bones exposed, all right. Cut this off, 
underneath. And cut. Voila. Whoa. So as you can see, there's a leg. You know, now we get all the little tendons and again. Pinch and scrape. Okay. Once you get it started, then you can possibly hold it with your hand and get off all of the flesh. Okay. There we go. Again, when I'm making this dish, this is a part that I start early in the day. It also gives my dry rub a chance to marinate in the meat. Okay. Coming through. Pinch. Oh, that's a good piece. That's a slippery piece. And it's great. Scrape this one a little bit better. There we go. There we go. Good piece there. All right, there's that one. And we have a couple more. Okay, let's flip that over. Pinch. Come on now. Sometimes it can be pretty slippery, but once you get it, it's done. And it's well worth the effort for the end result to be a nice piece of meat. Okay? Alright. Is that one? Make sure it has no bones. Oh, there's a couple little pieces here. These I'm just going to cut out. They're thin. Cut out. Make sure there's no bones in here. See, there's a bone. A little bit of bone right there. You know, so that's what you're filling for. You don't want that in your chopped meat. We get rid of that. Let's put that in the stock pot. Okay? And now we'll fill through it. Make sure we're pretty good. Well, there's another piece. Some are trying to hide on me. No, no, no. Don't take me. Don't take me. Can't get away from me. I'm giving you all, every last one of you. I want a nice smooth piece of meat here when I begin the chopping process. And also when cooking. Now it will cook out, but it's like when you fry the chicken. These are the things that cook out while the chicken is cooking. But in this case, I don't want to wait for that. I want it to already be gone. Okay? We got a stubborn piece here. All right, pinch and scrape. Well, I gotta do one at a time. All right, there we go. So there's one and two. Okay, and there we go. Two thighs, two thighs, and two legs ready for the next step. All right, so we're going to separate those. We've got two thighs, two legs, all right, because we've got two pieces of skin here. So I'm going to first begin by mincing this piece. All right, rough chop. Let's make us some room here. Rough chop, just to get it started, okay. These are going to be my sections to chop. And now, That through. It's almost like tenderizing. Okay. Chop that through. Again, a sharp knife is key to all of this. Now, mince. Then you can you can do this for the food processor as well, or you can do like myself, go old school. Okay. Because I know what texture looking for 
I don't want it to be too fine. I don't want it to be too thick either. Okay. Get that through. Almost like it went through a meat grinder. There you go. Get that into our bowl. Now for this demo purpose, I'm going to do one thigh and one leg and get it wrapped. Alright. Chop. Chop it through. Oh, oh, did I leave some gristle in there? No, so this is part of the part of the leg meat here. Let me clean that through. So this is the part, again, as I said, you didn't want earlier. You see what happens, how difficult it makes for you when you're trying to chop your meat, okay? This you don't want. All right, part of the sinew. Okay, so we take that piece, save the flesh. Scrape that off. Come on, one more piece, all right? There, you go here. Now, chop this up. Okay, now piece here. All this chopped. I'm ready for the mincer. The manual mincer, I like to call it. Alright, here we go. I notice. I'm going like, like small centimeters apart. So you still get that effect of every piece being chopped and tenderized. Then you're gonna change the position of the meat so you can get it across the grain as you just did. Okay? All right, now chop or mince. Then we knife, go back to the other side, get all the pieces chopped. One more run through. Wash my hands and then we'll start with the flavoring. Wow, that's gonna be great. So now that we have our meat minced, chopped, Let's add some flavor to it. Very simply. We're going to do garlic, sea salt. All right, so I'm going to salt and garlic at the same time. Now, since because of the type of dish you're doing here, we want to go liberal with this. We want this to be nice and flavorful, okay? So There's going to be a toss between a roast and a steam by it being inside the skin. Some pe pepper. You know, go heavy on the flavor here. I mean, use your senses. I mean, I talk about a lot about utilizing your senses when you're cooking. You know, be able to smell your seasoning. Double zero, can't go wrong double zero. Double zero has no salt in it. So if you're wondering, well, he's adding some type of flavored seasoning that has salt, there's no salt. I don't salt any of my spices. Some Italian herb, and a little bit of basil, some rosemary, some oregano, nice little mix there. I'm going to throw in a couple of pinches of parsley. Okay, flavor. This is all about flavor. Take my fork here, mix that through. Now what I like to do again, 
for those who are inexperienced, you can take a little bit and you can cook it up and taste your seasoning. I simply just go again by my nose. Okay, I'm going to go a little bit more with the garlic salt. doing his thing, I think I'm going to also chop up some more. Might as well get it all done, right? Wouldn't you say? Get it all done. Let that marinate a little bit. So it's all about time. You know, time, time, time. Time is on your side when it comes to cooking. That's an hard piece. And you take the time to let things come together. So I'll chop up some more of this. I'm actually just going to add mix. Then just readjust the season. Because if I don't use it all, it becomes an entirely different dish. Because the meat is already chopped. It's already minced. And it's already flavored. So at that point, you can use it for almost anything. again but that's okay it's all in the name of cooking right right all right Cut a piece off of here yeah, just chopped. but you can see again how easy it is to put this together it's almost like making a sausage but manually this is why I also is one of those dishes that if I'm going to do this manually, because it's always great when people watch me do this, they only do it every so often. If I was making like a huge batch, then of course I would use the food processor. In this case, in that case, you want to make sure you get through. All right, I need to chop this with some more. Okay, let me make sure that that is very well broken down. something you must always adjust your flavors. Right, turn this over, make sure it's really broken up, which it is. And in the pot or the bowl it goes. Wash the hands. I said a food process would have been faster, but what fun is that? All right, set you here. Let's get that stirred through. Look at the difference in the color of the meat. The meat that has been sitting in the marinade versus the meat 
that was just freshly added. So I kind of wanted you to see that so you can see exactly where we're going here. And that was just like maybe a few minutes. So we add some more double zero. Balance this off a little bit. Add some herb. This is Italian herb. Some dried uh, sea salt and garlic mix. I normally don't use a salt or garlic salt. I think they sell it on the market, but this sea salt and garlic mix, it's kind of like a special blend that I can use. I like that. I like the depth and the dimension as to the food. You know, most of those garlic salts, it's more salt than it is garlic. In this case, you have more garlic and less salt. So it works out nicely. And a couple of pinches of parsley. And voila. We're back in business. Mm, I can smell it. Oh yeah. Our plate that work with our skin here, Sue. So. Alright, now for the skin. Set this here. Set you here. Take the small knife. For the skin, we're going to take the piece where I didn't have the hole. Now, at one point, I actually had left the leg skin folded and just stuffed it. You kind of bring the whole piece back together. And then I said, you know what? Why do that? Let's just cut it through and make a nice mat to roll, okay? So you get this stretched out so you can see what you have here and decide what pieces you're gonna have. Now you can scrape off some of the fat if you like, you know? To me, it just adds more dimension, more flavor to the dish. All right. So now as I look at this, I'm making a decision what's going to be my rolls. I got to make sure everything goes in and it rolls in the sides. So I'm going to go in this direction. Let's see here. Make sure we're going to rip through the hole. Okay, I'll take off some of like that. All right. Now we take some of our chicken. Put it in. Like so. Alright. Form this. We boom boom boom. So you you're measuring and shaping as you do this. Alright? You don't want to overstuff, you don't want to understuff either. Alright? So we got that. We'll take one end, roll it over, take the other end, fold it over. Okay, and then roll, tuck and roll. Okay, nice and tight, tuck and roll. Make sure your seam side is down. And there you go. Voila, there's one. Okay. Now this is the one where we had the hole. It's fine, let's take off some of this excess here on the end. Now you can even square it off if you like. You know, so you can get a nice, completely even wrap. You know, myself, I like to leave it rugged. You know, leave it natural, leave it rugged. And just see how it goes. Let's cut this excess fat off. And remember, we got a few holes in this one, so we have to be careful. We have to really be careful where we're going to make our setup for the roll. All right, we're gonna cut through this. So this is great for a dinner party. This one's almost square, all right? That one's almost square, almost perfect. We've got the holes there, but we'll make it work. All right, so now we'll stuff this one. Okay, we're not gonna overstuff this one because of the hole. And we have a little bit left over to create a different dish. Oh, this is great. It's gonna be so much fun to create multiple dishes. Ah. All right, no, now. Same process, forget about the holes. It doesn't have to be perfect, perfect. I fold it over, tuck, and roll, okay? And 
There you go. Wash your hands again, and then we start to brown. Now here is always the fun part. We have our pan already we heat it, and we just turn the fire up. We have our roasting pan ready, non-stick. I'm going to add a little bit more cooking spray to it, lightly, to ensure it doesn't stick. A little bit of olive oil, or you can just use regular vegetable oil. I will use olive oil. Olive oil to the pan. Okay. That's cranked up. So if that get heated, we'll bring this over. We'll bring this over. Now we begin to brown on. And we begin to brown, it's going to be seam side down. This is just like frying chicken, but it's going to be in a shallow pan. Set that over here. Just like frying chicken, but in a shallow pan. Our goal here is to seal. So again, seam side down, so we can get this sealed as we begin to cook it. You can, if it's a thicker piece, you can tie it down with string. But we don't have a pretty thick piece. Make sure that that's nicely heated. Let's do a little bit more oil in here, just a little bit. All right. Our oven is set to 400 degrees because once we get the seal in the browning, we're going to finish it off in the oven. Wonderful. All right, we got ripples. We are good to go. Here we go. Remember, seam side down first. There's one. And there's two. Let me wash my hands in there. Remember how I always say, get it in the pan, put the meat in the pan and don't touch it. Just let it cook. Let it do its thing, okay? Let it do its thing. And that's what we're gonna do, we don't touch it. Let it cook, let it brown, let it seal. This is the most important part because you don't want your ingredients to seep out once you begin to roast it. Just let it nice, just let it seal. It's not gonna stick, we have enough oil, it's a non-stick pan. Look at this, rolling around. You can see the shape changing as it begins to cook, as the skin begins to crisp, see all the changes occurring. We have enough oil. I mean, we could even do a situation like this if you want to. It comes to the process a lot. By taking some of that oil and putting it over the top. Same thing you're basting. Same thing you do if you're roasting a turkey or something. You're basting. I'm just giving this a start because we're eventually going to turn this so it can brown and cook even on all sides. Now you're going to get some splatter because of the moisture that exists in the chicken. And this part here you don't have to do. This is something that I like doing. You don't have to do that. Let's see what we got here. You see that? That's what we're looking for. Looking for a nice little seal. That seal's not good on that one so far. We're going to let that one keep cooking. That's what I mean. Let it sit. Don't worry about it. Let it stay. Keep your heat adjusted. You don't want it to burn. There we go. See here? That's what we're after. Nice, even browning. This one here is coming out, as you can see. Okay? So that one's going to be interesting for the kids to cook. But it's still going to work out great. Because also, the meat on the outside is slightly cooking as well. But we finish it off in the oven so we make sure we have a complete cooking. Alright, turn that one. This one's working out great, isn't it? Wow. But again, it doesn't have to be perfect, because it's the end result that we want. It's the inside, the taste, that's what we're after. Let's see if we can get this one to work. We'll just turn it. Okay. Let that cook, cook a little bit. 
I mean, it's still going to be fine. It's still going to work out great once we begin to cook it. But as you can see, you know, I didn't get a good wrap here because the skin, I didn't have enough skin. So I tried to use a different direction. But again, it's all right. So let that keep cooking there. Let this one firm up. We let it firm up as it cooks as well. We're almost there. Let's get this side. Let's see over over here. Let's use that to rest up against that one. Get that side. There we go. They're buddies. Okay. Nice of the shallow fry. Notice how I'm tilting my skillet. They also have a pool of oil, so they can. I don't look like speed up the process. Okay, one's going to be ready to go. Put this one back on its side. So even with the hole that was in this one here, it's still holding. It's the force meat, it's the meat inside. Because that's firming up as well. The skin is taken there just to give us some texture. And also, it's a pretty design as well. It makes the presentation look even fancier. Wow, beautiful. Let's switch sides. Move this one over. Look at that. Beautiful color. We're almost ready. Ready for the oven. Are you ladies ready? These are ladies, of course. Are you ladies ready to go to the oven? Yes, yes! Turn off our fire. Drain slightly. Again, seam side down for the finished cooking. Same with this one. Seam side down for the finished cooking. The fire is off. 400 degrees. We're going to let this cook for about 20 minutes. 20 25 minutes. Go. Now we wait. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. We are back. Let's see what we got here. You know, for our chicken roll or chicken galantine. All right. Ooh, that smells great. That smells fantastic. Let's get one off and let's get something plated up here. We have our plate. You know, normally I let this cool down so the skin becomes firmer, everything comes real nice and firm, continues cooking. And you can have this nice and cold or cooled if you like, or you can have it, you know, uh, with a sauce, without a sauce, or just simply make a sandwich. I mean, it's a sausage already. So let's get a nice little slice out of it here. Woo! You know what? I'm going to use my hand so I can have a better grip on what's going on here. All right. Nice slice there. Look at that. Isn't that wonderful? Beautiful. You know, mm, you can see all of the nice seasoning through. So now we'll cut off some slices here. And there's one. And we'll get this plated up. I mean, great for just a simple snack. Great to use for entertaining with friends. I mean, you can make a few of these ahead if you like. And then just have them ready at your leisure for later. All right, so we'll get that set up on the plate. Mm, that piece is going to be mine, the end piece. So we'll put this one in. How's that? Okay. Beautiful. Now, we'll get some bread. I put some bread in the oven in the last few minutes of the cooking. So we'll get that sliced. A little bit of paper towel here. That end piece goes with that end piece. You have to keep it matched. <laughs> okay, simple slices of bread here. It doesn't have to be pretty, it just must be tasty. 
Okay. We stack those. How about one more piece? Okay. Nicely stacked. As I said, if you want like to have a sauce, you can have a sauce, any kind of sauce you want. I know what I can do. I'm going to add on a sweet chili sauce. You know? I mean again, simplicity at its best, but delicious. So a nice little sweet chili sauce. Bring that to the table for your guests. Some parsley, you know, always gotta have some contrasting colors here in the dish. And that is our dish. But the most important part is now giving it the final okay taste. So I'm going to take a little bit of the meat. I'll take my end piece here, a little bit of the meat, dip it in the sauce, okay, and the bread, mm. finger looking good, I'll tell you that. And here we go. Very nicely flavored. Great texture with the skin. Like the sweet chili sauce. Fantastic. To find out more about me, wow, this is great. To find out more about me, you can contact me or get in touch with me or follow me on Facebook. That's Cooking Raw Magazine, cookingraw.net. Don't forget to like the channel to watch more of my videos on the YouTube channel, Cooking in the Raw. I'll see you next time. I'm about to dig in for Cooking in the Raw. Bye.